Well, today I want to start off our video talking about horses. You know, some people, horses just play a major role in their life. They love horses, they are around horses, they like to, uh, when they do things for fun, they like to do them with horses. You know, I see a lot of students in class who like to draw pictures of horses. Me, on the other hand, I am not one of those person, people. In fact, horses and I have a mutually agreed upon re uh, relationship. I leave them alone and they leave me alone. You know, I've been on a horse three times and each time I've been bucked off. It is, we just don't like each other and that's okay. You know, when horses came to America, certain Native American tribes really gravitated to horses and others didn't. It's kind of interesting. If you were actually to look at those Native American tribes on a planet, on a map, or even any culture that uses horses, you can see that they kind of all fit in a single line around our planet. In fact, when geographers found this, they called that the horse latitudes because there's a spot from about 30 degrees north to about 40 degrees north or 30 degrees south, 30, 40 degrees south, that horses just seem to thrive. Well, why is that? Why did Native Americans in the plains of our country and in the southwest really use horses while in northwest and south in the northwest they didn't? Well, while you're thinking about that, I want to start today. We're going to continue our talk on climate. We're going to come back to the question and see if you are right. In this video, we're going to do three things. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to look for patterns in climate around the world. When we see that, we're going to group those patterns into three major categories, and then we're going to identify where they're found. So you can make some predictions about climate just by where you are on the planet. All right, so remember to write those in the Cornell note sheet. That should go under the big ideas section. So in a previous video, we talked about the four major factors of climate, and we listed those. We said the first one was where you were on the planet. We said the second one, we called that latitude. The second one was the amount of prevailing winds and what they blew over. We said the third was landforms or geography, how land changed which way the weather could come. The fourth one was ocean currents and how well, ocean currents can bring either warmth and temperature changes or they can bring cold and make the temperature drop. Now really those last three can only make small scale changes. Let me give you an example, right? You know, we said the United Kingdom should be colder, but because of the that ocean current it made it a little bit warmer. It didn't make it into a tropical jungle. It's still pretty close to where that climate it should be. So really prevailing winds landforms and ocean currents are going to change things on a kind of a smaller scale. Whereas latitude is going to change things on a much larger scale. And that's what we're going to talk about today are those large scale changes, the bigger changes on our planet. So how does latitude really affect our planet? And we touched on this in the last video. What latitude does is latitude, the further from the equator you go, changes the angle of the sunlight. Now, if you're at the equator, the sunlight is striking you pretty much perpendicular to our planet. And it's giving off, because of that, it's giving a lot more heat to our planet. So, you can expect the center of our planet is warmer. Whereas, if you go towards the poles, the angle is getting sharper. There becomes more of an angle to the sunlight, and it's colder. So, really, what latitude does is it changes the angle the sunlight hits our planet. Right? So, when we look at our planet, because of that angle, we can make some predictions. And it's kind of a general pattern. The first thing you can see that when you look at our planet is that the equator area, it's warm. And we just touched on that because that sunlight is much more perpendicular to our, to our planet. It's much stride off. It might it's part of an angle. 90 degrees, right? There you go. So if we look at it, it's called the tropics. We have the Tropic of Cancer, which is at the top, and the Tropic of Capricorn, which is down here at the bottom. And between those areas, between those two lines, including the equator, sun, the sun is always overhead, right? It's almost directly overhead, and so the sunlight is always pretty much perpendicular. Whereas if we go to the other extreme, way out here on the edges of our planet, we can see that the sunlight is changing, and now it's always coming at an angle, and so it's colder. And in between, it's kind of like Goldilocks. If it's really hot here and really cold there, it's just right. So we've come up with names for these. In the area, in the middle, where it's always warm, we call those the tropical climates. 
about here in the areas above at the north and south pole where it's always cold we call those the polar climates and in between it's the temperate it's just in between it's temporal it's kind of like Goldilocks it's a little bit of both and we're gonna see how that plays out so our three categories are tropical polar and temperate so let's see what you get in these three different types of climate well, in the tropicals, like I said, the sunlight's always perpendicular, and so it's really warm. And so there you can have tropical jungles, tropical deserts, these areas that are always warm, um, and they're, well, actually even warm, they're always hot, and there really is never a season, right? In Amazon rainforest, there really isn't a winter. It's always pretty much the same, right? So it's really always warm, and there is no, there's no seasons. Well, in the temperate, you can have a range, right? It's going between the, the um, I'm sorry, the climate and the polar climate, the tropical and the polar climates, and it changes, right? You can have warm at times, you can have cold times, you have much greater seasons because you have those changes. You can have all sorts of different uh, landforms and ecosystems that are in the temperate range. And at the poles, we call them those polar climates, and you have always cold, but you have drastic seasons. You either have summer or winter, and there really isn't much in between. Fall and spring are pretty tiny. In fact, in the winter, up at the poles, it's almost 24 hours of darkness. And in the summer, it's almost 24 hours of sunlight because of that angle that the sunlight's striking at. And that plays a huge role. So in the summer, you get melting, in the winter, you get freezing. But it's always cold because of the angle. So, we have our three different types. Well, let's go back and look at that horse latitudes, like I said in the beginning. They are always at the 30 to 40 degree area, right? You can always see them in there. Why is that? Well, it just so happens that horses in that area always have enough grass and other grains to eat. If you go a little bit further north to like 45 degrees where we're at, you get a lot more storms and a lot more water, and you also get a lot more trees. There isn't much natural grains. If you go a little bit southern of that 20 to 30 degree mark, it's kind of hot. It doesn't get as much, and you don't get as many storms, and so you don't get, you get more of a desert, right? And if you look at from the 30 to 40, it's kind of perfect for that. You get grains, you also don't have a lot of trees, and so it's easier to get a horse moving. So they call those the horse latitudes, and really all that is is just showing you a type of climate based upon where you are on your planet. Well, in this video, we really did three things. Let's kind of recap. We found patterns in the climate around the Earth. We saw the further away, right, in the center that we have tropical climates, then we have temperate that are in between, and then polar at the top. We identified what type of things you could expect in a polar area, out there, you can always expect it to be very cold because of the angle of sunlight. And then you can also expect that there's going to be either a summer or a winter. And the winter is always going to be dark. And the summer is always going to be bright. Sunlight. A temperate, which is going to have all four seasons and go from the range of cold to hot. Both of them. And the tropical, which are always going to be warm. We then saw what's kind of eco... Well, we then identified those three major groups and we showed you where they could be found. So, I want to remind you how these videos work. You can always go back and watch it again if you're not understanding something. You can pause it and rewind it. Right? But no matter what you're doing, always keep moving forward.